Hi, everybody. It is May 6, 2019. I'm going to uh, bring to your attention two documents that have been brought to my attention. Documents that prove that everything that's taking place in Venezuela is manufactured in Washington, D.C. Another failed coup attempt. That coup attempt last week. If you don't know about that coup attempt, I will link below to uh, this um, article that will bring you up to speed um, what has been taking place. This guy is such a punk. He is so unbelievably... Uh, well, how, how is it that this United States government of ours is so pathetic? You know, we can't really win a war. This, we've been working, well, our government, our military, our CIA have been working to take over Venezuela for two decades and still can't do it. Uh, why did they pick Juan Guaido? I mean, Trump recognizing him as the president of Venezuela. You listen to him in interviews, and I'm going to play just a few minutes of an interview that he just gave yesterday to BBC. Uh, he he is so not presidential. He's a punk. He's a U.S. puppet. <clears throat> so, for those who don't know, Trump recognized this punk as uh, the president of Venezuela. That's like another country recognizing Nancy Pelosi as our president. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, and uh, you know about Leopoldo Lopez's, uh, he was freed. Oh, great, mainstream media talks about it. Oh, yes, you know, this guy Lopez... Finally freed, he was a political prisoner. He was under house arrest uh, for organized pro violent protests. Uh, he was instrumental in the protests in 2002 to oust Chavez. These two are, are like punk friends, you know? Uh, it's really remarkable. It's sad, though. It's really sad that these guys have been actually held up to be recognized. I mean, other countries that have gone along with us, why do they go along with us? Well, they fear us. That's why. And another reason why they go along with us is because um, of the... They have to. Which... I will get to that document in one second, or that article, which is very interesting, and you might want to read it. But yeah, they are. They are obliged. European governments, they're obliged, to, agree with everything that we want. It's not because, they actually think, that Guaido, should be the president of Venezuela or that they agree with our position, they have to. These dudes are more, uh, are mere comic figures, wannabe fantasy heroes. That's exactly what they are. They're, the, they're like little punk kids that we chose. Oh, but, you know, we could take out Guido. It's a possibility. You know, he failed three coup attempts, and now why not just take him out and blame it on Maduro? Oh, and then we go in, you know, because we want to bring democracy to those Venezuelans. So Ron Paul warns hapless Guaido, now worth more dead than alive, to Washington's Venezuelan coup creators. Oh, poor Guaido. Your fate may be sealed. But this is interesting. Ron Paul stated that people like Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, who appealed to Venezuelan soldiers to protect their nation's constitution by siding with Guaido, were a bunch of clowns. You should hear how people are referring to this administration, these people in it, the neocons that Trump 
bought, brought right back into power, not like they ever left power, but, you know, we had to hide them during Obama years. Trump brought them right back to front stage. What has uh, Ron Paul said? They don't have the biggest notion about what the constitutional law in our country <laughs> would be like, and they are going to restore the constitutional law in other countries. It's just cliches, nonsense, bunch of clowns. And, well, the U.S. desperately needs a new Secretary of State. This is Paul Craig Roberts, Assistant Treasury Secretary under Reagan. A conservative, Republican, writes, American Secretary of State should be arrested for his impersonation of an American government official. Mike Pompeo cannot possibly be the U.S. Secretary of State because not even Donald Trump would appoint an idiot to this high position who thinks that Article 2 of the Constitution gives the President gives the President the authority to declare war and invade other countries. A former CIA director, now Secretary of State, actually stated in an interview the president has his full range of Article II authorities, and I'm very confident that any action we take in Venezuela would be lawful. This was Pompeo's answer. When asked if President Trump could intervene in the country's power struggle without congressional approval, our Secretary of State just rewrote our Constitution. Uh, yeah, uh, Article II is about. Well, it gives the power to declare war only to Congress. Mike, uh, Trump, uh, anybody want to weigh in here? All right. Scary. It's really scary. Uh, how unbelievably idiotic, stupid, but worse evil we are now appearing on the world stage. Okay. Um, restore Venezuela to the people. Most of the people who support Guaido are the rich. The vast majority of Venezuelans support Maduro. This was a massive May Day march in defense of the Bolivarian Revolution in support of Maduro. Apoyando al presidente Maduro, porque nosotros no, no queremos injerencia en el país. Nosotros somos un país libre, soberano. Nosotros todos los bloqueos que nos hagan, nosotros no vamos a permitirlo. Y nosotros vamos a seguir en pie de lucha. Lo que pasa es que con esta guerra mediática, por más que el gobierno no sube el sueldo, cuando el gobierno ya no sube el sueldo, todos los mayoritas ya le suben a la comida. Pero si hubieran dejado trabajar al gobierno, este país fuera un país pujante y no estuviéramos pasando por lo que estamos pasando. Pero sí hemos recibido beneficios del gobierno. Una cosa es que no, no nos dejen ver los beneficios. Ahí está la gran misión vivienda con la pensión, que si no hubiera trabajado en ninguna empresa, el, apenas cumplimos la mayoría para la pensión, porque una ama de casa trabaja más que un, una persona por fuera. ¿okay? Entonces, eso es algo que nos dignifica. O sea, sí se ven los logros, que lo que, que el imperialismo quiere taparnos de malas. Estamos aquí porque los logros de la revolución tiene que verlo toda Latinoamérica, toda la patria grande latino suramericana y caribeña, para que los pueblos ya nos unamos todos contra ese imperio genocida, asesino, que... Ok, we are what this man referred to as the genocidal murdering empire. That's who we are.
the United States. And that's how most of the world's people see us now. We are the evil empire. Sida, asesino, que nos está bloqueando por todas partes. ¿Por qué? Porque tienes que asfixiar a Venezuela para que los logros que obtuvimos en gran medida, en gran magnitud, desde el 2003 al 2013, en donde todos los organismos mundiales vieron que las estadísticas de desarrollo humano, de desarrollo social de este país eran superlativas, inclusive por encima de muchos países de eso que llaman primer mundo o super desarrollado. El salario de los trabajadores alcanzaba y hasta ahorrábamos y teníamos para la recreación, para nuestros hijos, para las universidades, para todo, a pesar de que las universidades en revolución han sido gratis, han aumentado las universidades y los cupos. Eso no se acuerda la gente que a, a, cuando lo, los 40 años de la pseudo democracia esa que teníamos, que lo que era una dictadura de cocopellana, aquí para entrar en la universidad costaba, pero como esto no ha habido nunca y nosotros vamos a recuperar nuestra revolución. Y no solamente la vamos a recuperar para Venezuela, la vamos a recuperar para todos los pueblos de Latino Sudamérica y el Caribe. Reports. Alrighty. So, dignity. Hmm. Proud. Proud of their homeland. Well, that's missing here, don't you think? Mike? Uh, the, oh, Guido. Okay. You, <laughs> this is the interview. He uh, is considering asking the U.S. for a military intervention if the U.S. doesn't shoot him in the head. To overthrow President Maduro. And you have failed three times. Are you worried that this is undermining your personal leadership? Unido que se desbasta o se hace daño es Maduro la que ha venido perdiendo una y otra vez, que está cada vez más débil, que se ve cada vez más solo, que no tiene respaldo internacional. Por el contrario, nosotros ganamos eh, aceptación, ganamos respaldo, ganamos en eh, opciones de futuro. But he has the support of the military. Part of them. <laughs> Evidentemente es parte de ellos, no todos. The Trump administration has said it is considering military action. But at the end of the week, President Trump himself spoke about humanitarian aid. Are you worried that Washington's position is softening? Por supuesto, la posición del presidente eh, Trump en este momento, sin medias tintas, sino simplemente eh, acusando no solamente de lo que ha sido la emergencia humanitaria compleja, más severa de la región, 7 millones de, de venezolanos, 25% eh, de la población, es decir, en riesgo de muerte reconocida. 25 percent? Oh my god. Uh, well, that may very well be true, but that's coming from our sanctions on Venezuela. De la población, es decir, en riesgo de muerte, reconoció así esa cifra, por cierto, por la ONU eh, en este eh, momento, así que yo creo que está muy firme y muy, muy determinada, no solamente As la posición del presidente Trump, la cual agradecemos, sino de todo el mundo. What specifically would you like to see the Trump administration do? Would you like to see them intervene militarily? Es muy importante esa pregunta, porque hoy en Venezuela existe un presidente encargado y un parlamento nacional que está buscando cambio. Eh, la única intervención que existe hoy en Venezuela es la de los cubanos, la que hacen inteligencia y contrainteligencia a nuestras fuerzas armadas, y también la intervención de militares eh, de aviones militares rusos en suelo venezolano. Yo creo que no solamente eh, es responsable evaluarlo, dado la crisis y la tragedia que vive eh, Venezuela, sino eh, mantener una alternativa si el régimen pretende seguir radicalizando un proceso que nos ha traído a este desastre. Yo, como presidente encargado del Parlamento eh, Nacional, evaluará todas las opciones. Mike Pence has just come out and, well, offer carrots to the Venezuelan military and warnings to judges. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence is set on Tuesday 
to offer new incentives to Venezuela's military to turn against President Nicolas Maduro responding to an attempted uprising that fizzled out last week, a senior administration official told Reuters a lying sack of sheet. Okay. Still going for it. Still trying. Are we going to send in Blackwater? Are, well, and I posted a video, I don't know if any of <laughs> Eric Prince uh, had a, has a, had a meeting with uh, with the head of, well, let me get it. Yeah, private meetings in the United States and Europe. Prince sketched out a plan to field, field up to 5,000 private mercenary soldiers for hire on behalf of Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. Send in Blackwater. That'll get the job done. And don't be surprised if Trump takes him up on it. If anything goes further, I'm telling you, it is Washington all the way, and it will be yet another tragedy for a sovereign nation to fall. And the Venezuelans, man, they will hate us forever. Uh... We have a very sick military and government. Very sick. And it is causing so many people to suffer. So, here. U.S. State Department publishes, then deletes, sadistic Venezuela hit list boasting of economic ruin, the gray zone, obtained a list of key outcomes on Venezuela, deleted out of apparent embarrassment by the State Department. It boasts of wrecking the nation's economy, destabilizing its military, puppeteering its political opposition. Six days before self-proclaimed Venezuelan interim president Juan Guaido's attempted attempt to violently overthrow Venezuela's democratically elected president and government, U.S. State Department published a fact sheet that boasted of Washington's central role in the ongoing coup attempt. After realizing the incriminating nature of its error, the State Department quickly acted to remove the page. Uh, here's the here's the document, seven pages. Um, now, I, I I have a hard time seeing this as an accident. Uh, maybe what our government is doing, government officials, they're just putting it in our face that we are no longer, you know, this even uh, halfway decent country. This government, military, CIA, all of it, gone rogue, criminal organization. It's actually a corporation, but it is a criminal. There's just criminals that we are the evil empire and we are a terrorist government. I guess it's hard for Americans to, you know, uh, consider that they like their delusion. We are exceptional. We are morally superior when we're the opposite of that. So, yes, it put to bed any claims of Guaido's independence from Washington. And you can read uh, about this document yeah, entitled U.S. Actions on Venezuela. The document boasted that the U.S. policy had effectively prevented the Venezuelan government from participating in the international market and has led to the freezing of its overseas assets. It read like a sadistic celebration of Washington's retrib retribution against the Venezuelan population as a whole, uh, the kind of collective punishment which is illegal according to Article 33, 33 hmm, of the Geneva Conventions. State Department gloated that its policy had ensured that the Maduro government cannot rely on the U.S. financial system 
to conduct business, noting key outcomes, quote unquote, of U.S. actions include the fact that roughly 3.2 billion of Venezuela's overseas uh, dollars are frozen. It went on to boast that Venezuela's oil production fell 736,000 barrels per day in March, which substantially reduced the government's revenue. And Mark Weisbrot, co-director at the Center for Economic and Policy Research, told the Gray Zone, if I were the State Department, I wouldn't brag about causing a cut in oil production. This means even more premature deaths than the tens of thousands that resulted from sanctions last year. 40,000 Venezuelans died between 2017 and 2018 as a direct result of U.S. sanctions. But we care about those Venezuelans and we want to bring them freedom and democracy. State Department praised the opposition for providing medical and hygiene attention to over 6,000 Venezuelans. That was our uh, humanitarian aid a couple of weeks ago. Well, compare that to the 300,000 people estimated to be at risk because of a lack of access to medicines or treatment, including 80,000 people with HIV who have not had any antiretroviral treatment since 2017 because of our sanctions, 16,000 people who need dialysis, 16,000 people with cancer, 4 million with diabetes and hypertension, and they can't get their medical needs met because we love them so much. Well, we, we place these sanctions and they're not able to get what they need. We love them. Venezuela crisis response assistance uh, touted by the State Department is not even a band-aid. That was the humanitarian, yeah, man, mainstream media. Oh, my God, Maduro, he's blocking that humanitarian aid. He wants the Venezuelan people to die. We are such a disgrace. So, touted by the State Department, not even a band-aid compared to the wound that U.S. unilateral coercive measures, the sanctions, have inflicted on the country, having denied the Venezuelan government the ability to provide for its own population. The U.S. has essentially promised that thousands more deaths will occur and uh, the Mark, was it Mark? The quotes that I just read I can't, oh my God, my, my brain is really leaving me. Um, Venezuela, oh, I'm sorry, Venezuela's uh, ambassador to the United Nations, Samuel Moncada, characterized this document as a list of confessions. Imagine if any other country says it's proud of saying that we are destroying the economy of our neighbor. We are proud that we destroyed the political system of our neighbor. We are proud that they are suffering. They are saying we are waging war against Venezuela. We're proud. We're proud of causing so much suffering around the world. The document further highlighted U.S. actions that have supposedly led more than 1,000 members of the military to recognize Juan Guaido as interim president and defect to Colombia, as well as stranding an estimated 25 crude oil tankers with 12 million barrels off Venezuela's coast. Mancado, Mancada said they are saying that they are causing trouble in our military and inducing a military coup, which so far they haven't achieved, but they are working towards. State Department's fact sheet even frames recent decisions by the Organization of American States, Lima Group, Inter-American Development Bank, European Union, to either recognize or support Guaido's shadow administration as a U.S. achievement, highlighting Washington's outsized influence with each of these supposedly 
international governing body bodies. We bribe, we force, we get what we want. It's not like these uh, groups actually say, hey, the United States, they're taking the moral high road. We want to back them. We want to support them. No. Uh, we have puppets in governments, and they have to do what, you know, they've got to do the U.S. bidding. They are so far out of any normal parameters of decency. Yeah, we are. United States. They are so far out of any normal parameters of decency, morality, legality, reason, that really they are dangerous. They are a real threat to international peace, and they are a real threat to my people. You got that exactly right. We are a threat to international peace, We've proven it over and over and over again. And, uh, well, so outside decency, morality, legality, it is amazing that even one adult American still has that delusion that we are a good moral country. This is the document. So I will link below to it, and you can read it. But there's another link leaked document, USA's February 2018 plan for coup in Venezuela. <gasps> Ooh, who's this guy? Oh, he seems really nice, doesn't he? United States Southern Command. Admiral K.W. Tidd of U.S. South Command, the author of the leaked memo, a detailed plan from United States Southern Command, dated 23 February 2018, was issued with the title, Plan to Overthrow the Venezuelan Dictatorship Masterstroke. A uh, document signed by Admiral Kurt W. Tidd, commander of SOUTHCOM. Uh, it is far more than just a military plan. It was comprehensive, directing military, diplomatic, propaganda, policies regarding the Trump administration's plan overthrow of Venezuela's government. Some of what this government states, encouraging popular dissatisfaction by increasing scarcity and rise in price of the foodstuffs, medicines, and other essential goods for the inhabitants. So you heard that woman uh, who was part of the May uh, Day um, the massive uh, rally, who talked of our government gives us benefits, but we can't realize these benefits because suddenly we get these increases in foods. So, uh, encouraging popular dissatisfaction within the people by increasing scarcity and rise in price of the foodstuffs, medicines, and other essential goods for the inhabitants making more harrowing and painful the scarcities of the main basic merchandises. This is what we do. This is so sick, so sadistic, so, oh my God, pathological, oh, intensifying the undercapitalization of the country, the leaking out of foreign currency, and the deterioration of its monetary base, bringing about the application of new inflationary measures, fully obstruct imports, and at the same time discourage potential foreign investors in order to make the situation more critical for the population, compelling uh, Maduro to fall into mistakes that generate greater distrust and rejection domestically, besiege him, ridicule him, pose him as a symbol of awkwardness and incompetence to expose him as a puppet of Cuba. Cuba, And what have we been doing? Exactly that. You know, suddenly he's a puppet of Cuba. That's what we're hearing. Mainstream media. Really? Oh, well, that's part of the plan. Appeal to domestic allies as well as other people inserted from abroad in the national scenario. Uh, scenario 
in order to generate protests, riots, and insecurity, plunders, thefts, all assaults, and hijacking of vessels, as well as other means of transportation, with the intention of deserting this country in crisis. Through all borderlands, and other possible ways jeopardizing in such a way that national security of neighboring frontier nations uh, causing victims and holding the government responsible for them. <laughs> Magnifying in front of the world the humanitarian crisis in which the country has been submitted to. Structuring a plan to get the profuse desertion of the most qualified uh, professionals from the country in order to leave it with no professionals at all, which will aggravate even more the internal situation and along these lines, putting the blame on the government. The presence of combat units from the United States of America and the other named countries under the command of a joint general staff led by the United States. Aren't we fabulous? The Wayback Machine plan to overthrow the Venezuelan dictatorship, masterstroke. Well, your masterstroke hasn't been so masterful. And I am sick of this country. This administration, former administrations, our government, our military, all of the people who just lie through their teeth. It's all about getting Venezuela's resources, oil. It's all about regime change, sticking a puppet into the top position in the country. So it will do our bidding. And I am sick of Americans who refuse to acknowledge how rogue, how evil, how depraved our government and mil military have become. Um, I will link below to this article, the European Union is obliged to participate in U.S. wars. Treaty of Maastricht, their defense, the European Union, including the neutral countries, have placed their defenses under uh, NATO, which is directly exclusively by, directed exclusively by the United States. Pentagon delegates the economic headquarters of the countries it wishes to destroy to the U.S. Department of the Treasury sanctions, all members of the European Union and NATO are obliged to apply U.S. sanctions. You can read this. You know, the war that Hillary Clinton promised to start? <laughs> Jesus. And people think, oh, well, it's He's definitely better than Hillary Clinton. What the hell is wrong with your thinking? Very interesting article. And the U.S. has sanctions in 20 countries. Belarus, Myanmar, Burundi, North Korea, Cuba, the Russian Federation, Iraq, Lebanon, Libya, Nicaragua, the Syrian, Syria, the, uh, well, Venezuela, uh, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Islamic Republic of Iran, Serbia, Somal uh, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, Ukraine, Yemen, Zimbabwe, and, well, <laughs> do you know what's happening with Iran? Uh, our sanctions and our secondary sanctions which will be uh, coming to other countries if they don't stop buying Iran's oil. Oh yes, we dictate everything. Targets are never in Western Europe, but exclusively in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, Caribbean, Africa. Um, all these regions were listed as early as 1991 by President George Bush Sr. Uh, it's all about taking over these countries and these sanctions, look, you know, that sick, twisted psychopath, Madeleine Albright, 
in an interview, 60 Minutes. What did she say to a question? Do you think that it was worth killing half a million Iraqi children with those sanctions? Yes, uh, it was worth it. I mean, are you kidding me? So now the Venezuelans are discovering with horror what economic war actually means and are realizing that with the tin horn Juan Guaido, as much as with President Nicolas Maduro, uh, we're killing people with these sanctions. It's just another weapon of war. So, <laughs> Venezuelan in crisis. What can bring stability? Geez, I can't. Well, this is hard. It's very, very complicated. Uh, how about the U.S. get the... Oh, okay. I was just about to curse. And it's it was going to be the F word, which I know offends a lot of people. So, how about the United States lift those sanctions off Venezuela? Get the hell out of Venezuela. Leave them alone. And then they will prosper. And then, hey, they get to live with dignity. And they will have their freedom. Venezuela will be a sovereign nation. <gasps> oh, something that we can only dream of. All links are below.